Monopoly might be America's favorite board game, but it has a surprising secret. Today, we're taking a chance to learn about Monopoly's true origins. Go to jail! Go directly to jail! No! The classic origin story of Monopoly goes something like this. In 1933, during the darkest days of the Great Depression, an unemployed engineer named Charles Darrow invented a real estate trading game called Monopoly. Darrow's invention soon caught the eye of the nearly bankrupt board game manufacturer Parker Brothers, who helped Darrow produce the game. Monopoly was a huge success, saving the Parker Brothers from ruin and turning Darrow into a millionaire. It's a classic rags to riches story. There's just one teensy tiny little problem. It's a lie. Charles Darrow didn't invent Monopoly. A woman did. Lizzie McGee, the true inventor of Monopoly, was born in Illinois in 1866. Her father was a progressive newspaper publisher, and when she was just a teenager, Lizzie's father gave her a copy of the book, Progress and Poverty, by the radical economist Henry George. Henry George and his followers believed that the land was for common good, and it was being exploited by monopolists and landlords. To solve this injustice, George proposed what he called the single tax, which would eliminate most taxes except for those on land, shifting the country's tax burden from, well, the working class to the wealthy, landowning elite. Forced to drop out of school and support her family, Lizzie couldn't have agreed more. After moving to Washington, D.C., Lizzie McGee began to teach classes about George's ideas in the evenings. During the day, she worked as a typist, performed in community theater. She was also an inventor. In 1893, McGee applied for a patent on a gadget that made it easier to pass paper through typewriters. In 1904, McGee received her second patent, this time for a board game. While most board games at the time were simply used for entertainment, Lizzie McGee decided that they could also be a perfect way to teach people about Henry George and single tax. She called her invention the Landlord's Game. Just like Monopoly, the Landlord's Game featured a square board with nine properties on each side, including four railroad companies and the famous go-to-jail space. Players would buy a property and ruthlessly extract rent from the opponents. McGee hoped that the extremely cutthroat nature of the game would force them to see the injustices of 20th century American capitalism. McGee made two sets of rules for the game. One to illustrate how inhumane unbridled capitalism was, and the other to demonstrate how Henry George's single tax could be a public good. The only problem is that people found that being filthy rich was actually pretty freaking fun. As the landlord's game quietly spread throughout America, most people customized their boards to add their local street names, but much of its original anti-capitalist message was ignored by the players. It was a group of Quakers in Atlantic City who added the iconic street names, such as Kentucky Avenue and Boardwalk to the board. Charles Darrow was introduced to this version of the game in the 1930s, and he quickly stole the idea, adding his own artwork and sold his invention of Monopoly to the Parker Brothers. The CEO of Parker Brothers quickly realized that Darrow's invention was a blatant ripoff of McGee's, and that Lizzie's original game had long since become part of the public domain. But by then, the game was a blockbuster, and it was saving his company from bankruptcy. So Parker Brothers did little to acknowledge McGee's role, and she watched as Charles Darrow became world famous. A furious McGee went to the press in 1936 to explain the game's true origins, and in an effort to keep her quiet, Parker Brothers paid her a measly 500 for the rights to the landlord's game, and agreed to publish some of her other games as well. But Parker Brothers never really promoted Lizzie's inventions, and when they finally reissued her landlord's game in 1939, it bore no resemblance to the original and didn't even include the single tax rules. McGee died in 1948, her achievements all but forgotten. Her story wouldn't be revealed until almost 30 years later, when a dogged economics professor took on Parker Brothers determined to find the truth. To learn what happened next, be sure to watch American Experience's new film, Ruthless, Monopoly Secret History.